child, there isn't anything you can't do. Those motivational, inspirational, transcendent words have shaped the trajectory of Diane Dunkelman's life and business career. They form the core of her philosophy, which she shares with those she mentors and those she loves. As a child, her grandmother was tailoring clothes. Diane took the scraps and made doll clothes. When she proudly showed them off, her grandmother uttered those seven prophetic words, Child, there isn't anything you can't do. While living with her grandparents in Baltimore, Diane developed a work ethic when, at age eight, she enlisted her playmates and their parents to create plays, games, and prizes to raise money for good causes. Her loving memories include fishing trips to the Blue Ridge Mountains, where her grandfather taught her to fly fish. She's been fishing ever since. Her bait has been good ideas to fulfill unmet needs in the areas of health, education, personal safety, and the arts. In 1994, frustrated that she and her friends couldn't get more information about menopause, Diane decided to throw a benefit luncheon for WCET Channel 48. She called it Speaking of Women's Health. In virtually no time, impressed by Diane's shrewd and visionary leadership and her powers of persuasion, national corporations invested more than $146 million in speaking of women's health, and that was just in cash. CEOs recognized that Diane's business was connecting their businesses with the lives of women and their families. Speaking of women's health became Walmart's national platform for women's health with millions of health brochures in their kiosks and 5,000 all-day Speaking of Women's Health events in stores annually. At those events, women received, free of charge, more than 28 million books over six years that were written by Dunkelman and her team of physicians. They were also translated into Spanish. Dunkelman often joked asking, does that make me a best-selling author? Over this period of time, Speaking also had a national weekly show on Lifetime Television. Diane recruited some of her friends, national celebrities. They included Florence Henderson, Mrs. Brady, Valerie Simpson, singer, songwriter, and Mary Wilson of the Supremes to support the importance of the Speaking of Women's Health brand. Child, there isn't anything you can't do. The prestigious Cleveland Clinic acquired Speaking of Women's Health in 2007, and Dr. Holly Thacker of the Cleveland Clinic became the organization's new CEO. In April 2015, the Cleveland Clinic welcomed Diane back as Cleveland Clinic's Speaking of Women's Health chief strategist. Diane has tackled another business opportunity to make lives better. In 2006, she started Clever Crazes for Kids, a national website with a focus on health, wellness, and self-esteem for grade school children. She soon heard from educators that there was also a need for kindergarten through eighth grade students in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, which has come to be known as STEM. True to Diane's passion and recognition of the importance of the arts for the development of critical thinking and diverse cultural appreciation, she asked her team to develop a robust arts curriculum. Their work, adding the A from arts, turned STEM into STEAM, the backbone of clever crazes for kids. Nothing motivates like success, so outstanding students with the highest scores who have taken the Clever Crazes Ethics Pledge are eligible to win prizes. Acclaimed neurosurgeon Dr. John Tu appreciated that Clever Crazes wanted to include physical activity as part of its programming for young scholars. As Dr. John Tu said, as important as exercise is for your body, it's even more important for your brain. Uh, Diane is a, uh, a leader. She is uh, financially uh, astute. She is strategically oriented. She's passionate. She's involved. Uh, she brings mostly, or most important, her ability to connect with people. And she is, develops uh, friendships uh, throughout the Cincinnati community, throughout the nation, and people know her and love her and enjoy being with her. And if uh, in a business situation, they enjoy working with her. 
Cincinnati has repeatedly honored Diane for her business acumen and her generosity. Her list of awards and recognitions is endless. Perhaps most humbling of all was her invitation to be a guest speaker for the 50th anniversary commemorating the Montgomery bus boycott. 50 years ago, Mrs. Rosa Parks didn't give up her seat. She didn't move to the back of the bus. What a powerful message that was, and what a powerful message this is today for women across America. In 2005, we cannot move to the back of the bus. We cannot give up our seats. Instead, we must step to the front of the bus. In fact, we must steer the bus. Our task is to embrace civil rights, social justice, health, well-being, and personal safety for all Americans. Diane means the world to me. She has been an incredible friend, a wonderful mentor, and she has truly been the one to give me my wings so I can fly. I'll never forget the time that we traveled together to Montgomery, Alabama back in 2005 for the 50th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott. There we were, hand in hand, among so many people. And I remember staring at her and looking at her and saying, what a wonderful woman of courage. Diane, that, at that moment, that was truly a mountaintop experience for me, and I am so blessed to have someone like Diane in my life. I'm incredibly lucky. Diane is not only my mother, but she's my boss and my mentor. And as all of us with a mentor know, having somebody to look up to pushes us to do our best. Diane has always taught me to find something that I feel passionate about and that the excellence in work will follow and the work will make a difference. Diane leads me and the rest of our team to do our best every day at Clever Crazes. One of the most fun things about Diane, she believes in surrounding herself with art. Now don't think Diane is just another uptight, stuffed shirt. She has a lively wit, a quick tongue, and sometimes purple hair. Diane always has time for her many friends and her rich family life. She first fell in love with Cincinnati when she came to live here with her late husband, Jay. Together, they raised their son, Joshua, and daughter, Phoebe, and welcomed into the family their son-in-law, Alex, and their two grandchildren, Sophia and Henry. Diane enjoys talking with them about current events, travel, the arts, and yes, thanks to her beau, Peter, even sports for which she can now recite all of the teams in the Big Ten, SEC, and ACC conferences. Child, there isn't anything you can't do. Well, I have to say, that is the first time that I have not had at least a little peek at a video before it was presented to the rest of the world. <laughs> And that's probably a really good thing. It was fun. Um, and I say the rest of the world because the rest of my world really is right here in this room. I have to say Clyde and Phoebe did a, an absolutely spectacular job of describing the essence of speaking of women's health and clever crazes for kids. And I think it's so cute. Clyde knows me so well. And it was so sweet that he incorporated my grandmother's inspirational phrase, say it with me, child, there isn't anything you can't do. <laughs> I think you got the point across, Clyde. <laughs> Actually, there is a very funny story about this. And Clyde, I'm not even sure you know this. As the headmaster at my son Josh's uh, prep school used to say, nothing motivates like success. So each time I had another success, I thought to myself, well, of course, this is because my grandmother told me there wasn't anything I couldn't do. And we all believe our grandparents, don't we? And if we're grandparents, we count on that, don't we? Right? So I said to myself, if I am ever lucky enough to have grandchildren, this is exactly what I am going to say to them. So one day, my first grandchild, Sawyer was making art, that three-year-old art, sitting at our kitchen table. You know, collages that are made up of a drawer that you have with scraps of ribbon and construction paper and magazine pictures and cotton balls. You get it, right? 
So about four o'clock, I said to Sawyer, it's time to get cleaned up so I can take you home. So let's put all these scraps away and we'll, we'll play with them another time. With that, Sawyer looked up with, at me and proudly showed me this artwork. Nini, look what I made. I thought to myself, this is it. This is the moment I have been waiting for. So I said, child, So Sire, Sawyer's eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger, and this huge smile came over his face, which you can just imagine. I mean, this is what I'd been waiting years for, and I had success. So I put Sawyer in the car, and I took him home, and Phoebe was standing at the doorway and watched as, as Sawyer went up the sidewalk, waving his piece of artwork to show Mommy. And about two minutes later, I got home, two whole blocks away we live, and my phone was ringing. And Phoebe said to me, in a rather agitated voice, <laughs> what did you tell my child? Well, I panicked because I never, well, I almost never, almost never comment on the wonderful way that Phoebe and Alex are raising my grandchildren. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry, I mean raising their children. I get a little confused there sometimes. But my mind was racing. What could I possibly have said? Did I say your parents let you stay up too late? Did I say your parents should allow you to have more ice cream and more chocolate? Or did I even say your parents should let you come over and spend more time here with Nini? But no, honest to God, I couldn't think of anything. But never, nevertheless, my armpits were sweating down to my waist. I mean, it's my daughter on the phone, right? So I said, I swear, Phoebe, I said, absolutely nothing. Phoebe said, really? Well, let me tell you. Sawyer came right into the house, marched right up to his little brother, took his arm, and bit him. <laughs> and Phoebe said, you go right to your room, and you think about what you just did. And Sawyer started to walk down the hallway. His little lip started to quiver, tears in his eyes. And he turned back to Phoebe and said, Nini said there wasn't anything I couldn't do. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Can you imagine how long Sawyer had been waiting for permission to bite his little brother? <laughs> right? <laughs> so much for positive motivation. No, but seriously, there is so much positive motivation in this room tonight. And it starts with you, Sawyer. Child? Ever since you took that first little not-so-great bite out of your brother's arm, you have been taking great, big, wonderful bites out of life, and you have done wonderful things, and we are all excited to see the wonderful things that you will do. So I give you a lot of credit, kiddo. And truthfully, thinking about motivation in all the years that I have been coming to this very prestigious and very fun dinner, there is an opportunity to take away something wonderful from every one of these laureates. I mean, from one of the laureates, I take away ribs. <laughs> Seriously, it's amazing. I mean, you can't be successful in business if you don't have good food, right? And I'm telling you, Jean Robert is here tonight. That's one of my kitchens. We know, Matula, we are there at least two nights a week, and Peter orders extra food so he can bring it home and have it the next day. And. Um, I see John Zipperstein was here tonight, and I know Trio's had a table, so it's pretty important for us, and then I don't have to cook too much, and Peter doesn't have to shop too much. So they're always, everyone has great takeaways. And talking about takeaways, my beau, Peter Schwartz, told me that his grandfather gave him three great concepts, three lessons that he should think about every time he was thinking about business or something important in life. Take advice from the people you admire. Learn from the mistakes you make and the mistakes of others, and hire smart people. So I'd like to think that Peter's grandfather would be pleased to know that I try to do each of these things, even though, of course, I never knew him. But these wonderful words get passed on, and that's how we get legacies. So. 
I think that probably the fact that we all practice these things is why you're honoring speaking of women's health and clever crazes here tonight. Many of the people that I admire most are here with us tonight. My family, my best friends, who in many cases are also my colleagues at work. I take their advice because it's very good. Often solicited and more often frequently just offered. <laughs> but I appreciate it. And I like to think that I've become a pretty quick study, Peter, on my own mistakes. And I do watch what national leaders do, global people, and I watch where they say, oops, and I try to think, OK, I don't want to do that. Our very own team um, at Clever Crazes practices a very interesting concept that I learned at Walmart. And it's called COE, Correction of Errors. So we review often, we consider our errors, and collectively we find a correction. And the third charge of Peter's grandfather, I know I do, and I know I do it well. I hire smart people. So I would like to recognize, obviously, the Cleveland Clinic, who was so smart that they acquired Speaking of Women's Health, the team members who are here who helped so much. They were such important parts with the growth of Speaking of Women's Health and especially here tonight, my Clever Crazes team. My smart friends, my very smart family, the very, very smart selection committee. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there is one woman who deserves a huge thank you tonight, Julia Poston. It was Julia who brought Speaking of Women's Health and Clever Crazes to the committee. And I love you, girlfriend, not just because you're giving me the goods tonight, <laughs> but because you give me the goods and advice when I really need it. Um, it's funny about this whole thing, though. One, one morning, I came into my office, and I got a call from Mike Keating. And he said, I can't tell you why, but I'm very happy that you're going to get a call that you definitely deserve. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, OK, he has a secret. So I said, thank you, and I let it go. And then later that evening, I was at a meeting, and George Vincent came up to me. And he said, I can't tell you what it is, but you're going to get a call that is absolutely appropriate. OK, so I have to admit, I was getting a little bit curious, right? These two leading businessmen in the community had something that they thought was a very big deal. Honestly, they were so adorable. They reminded me of two little schoolboys who had just bought Christmas presents for their moms at the Christmas Bazaar at school, and they were just dying to tell them, but they knew those nuns told them, do not tell your mother, <laughs> don't give away the secret. So of course, being so good with numbers, as Larry said, thank you. I quickly put two and two together, and I thought, oh, I get it. Mike's the CEO, and George is the chair, so obviously they're going to ask me to go on the board of the Christ Hospital. <laughs> and boy, is that going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> And then the very next night at an event, one of the many where Julia Poston has been honored, she told me about this award. And of course, it cost us even more money, but we are very glad to give it up. So I have heard from every laureate over the years, I've heard them when they stand up here and they say they're humbled. Me too. But actually, I have plenty of opportunities to be humbled every day. But tonight, I am also totally thrilled. I mean, I am just beyond thrilled. I am particularly thrilled that Clever Crazes, while we are in every sense of the word, fulfilling our mission as a nonprofit, that we are being recognized by the business community. This is a very big deal. And after all, the importance of educating our young children across the country should be one of the most important businesses of our nation. And it certainly is the mission of Junior Achievement. And this evening is their biggest fundraiser that helps them provide these wonderful services for the young people, I call them our young scholars, to compete in a global society. So this award really goes to all of us, to our staff, our consultants, our board, and the hundreds of thousands of educators 
and students who access Clever Crazes for Kids and the women who still benefit from speaking of women's health. And of course, our tagline always was and, and continues to be to educate women to make informed decisions about health, well-being, and personal safety for themselves and their families. And how well I remember sitting in Gordon Brunner's office. Some of my P&G girlfriends are here, Jenna, Mel. But we were sitting there on the 11th floor talking about the budding idea of speaking of women's health. And Gordon Brunner said to me, I am going to help you make this happen. And it is going to be great. So congratulations to all of us. And I want to say, as I look out here at the guests this evening, there are very many outstanding women in this room tonight, many with huge successes in their business. And I would like to say that I am looking forward to celebrating with them when they are on this podium. Once again, seriously, a very humble and grateful thank you to Larry Keller, who twisted but did not break your arms to buy tables tonight. Thank you very much. Larry is also an amazing mentor to me, as is his wife, Barbara, who has been my dear friend forever. To my friend and colleague, Karen Williams. Karen, thank you for saying those wonderful things. It really means the world to me. To my darling, smart, wonderful daughter, Phoebe Pardo, for the wonderful things that you said on there. Thank you for pulling those out. It was really great. To Janine Spang, who took over probably 25 years all of those pictures that were up there, very fun. And to Clyde Gray, who in his new business venture, Blackboard, helped to prepare this video. Now, Clyde and Kalena are longtime friends. And isn't Clyde handsome in his white tie and tails? I mean, he really is a handsome guy. And Clyde is a guy who looks good from every angle. <laughs> Thank you for this. <laughs>